the real basis of Buddhism is not a set of ideas but an experience and this of course is something altogether other than words if you have say tasted a certain taste the taste of water you know what it is but to somebody who hasn't tasted it it can never be explained in words but the problem goes far beyond that it's basically that the whole order of the world is different from the very simple order of syntax and grammar and that while on the one hand the order of the world is extraordinarily complex the order of words is really very very simple and therefore to try and explain life is really as clumsy an operation as trying to drink water with a fork the human being seems to be turned into a creature calculated to get in his own way He's, he gets in his own way because as I've explained he's always questioning himself he's always trying to fit the order of his nature into the order of sense the order of thought and words and therefore he loses his naturalness he loses his spontaneity and so you see we are actually relying all the time upon this peculiar unintelligible that is unintelligible in words form of natural order it's at the basis of everything we do and even when we try to figure something out and describe it in words make a decision on the basis of that we are relying unconsciously upon a kind of order that we don't figure out at all but this is what makes everything seem so problematic when we say we're trying to make sense out of life that means in a way that we're trying to treat the real world as if it were a collection of words now words have a meaning you can look them up in the dictionary and they mean something other than words but you can't look up actual people or mountains or actual stars in a dictionary they're not in a dictionary they're not words and therefore they're not signs but the real difficulty that we encounter in trying to make sense out of life is that we are trying to fit a very very complex order life itself to a very very simple order the order of words and this involves us in all kinds of tangles and difficulties the question comes from the order of words the answer comes from the order of nature from me the process of educating people may be likened in a way to a procrustean bed you know that gentleman in greek mythology called procrustes he had a bed for overnight guests and if they were too long for it they were chopped down if they were too short for it they were stretched and this always involves some injury to the overnight guest and in the same way the process of upbringing involves some warping of our nature and zen and buddhism in general have as their objective the curing of this inevitable disease which we contract as a kind of poisonous byproduct of being civilized you know it's like you salt meat to preserve it but when you want to eat it you have to soak the salt out of it and so in the same way the barrier of awkwardness of self consciousness can be taken away and so you might say the objective of zen is to restore a person to his original naturalness his original spontaneity we are so unaccustomed to acting with spontaneity that we have no faith in it and therefore we don't as it were acquire practice in the use of spontaneous action we are only practiced in the use of deliberate action and what zen proposes to do is to give us training in the practice of spontaneous action for at the basis of all chinese thought there is 
a profound trust or faith in the natural functioning of our own mind bodies. That is to say, it would never occur to them to make sense that we should mistrust our own nature, that we should say man's nature is fundamentally depraved and unreliable. Because if that were true, we would not even be able to trust our own mistrusting. And then we should be tied up in an entirely vicious circle. To do anything at all, man has to be able to trust himself. And therefore to trust his own spontaneous function. Before your father and mother conceived you, what was your true nature? In other words, who are you? Show me you. Don't just give me a theory as to who you are, an idea, but demonstrate by an actual act which will show me your genuine naked self. Another old master was asked, what is the entrance to the path? He said, do you hear the mountain stream? Yes. There's the way to enter. And still another was up in front of a group of students one day about to preach a sort of sermon. And just as he was opening his mouth to start, a bird was singing on a nearby tree. And so he waited and let the bird sing. When the bird finished, he said, sermon is ended. Puzzling, puzzling, how to present the master with some act that will answer the poem, some act that will reveal his original self, that is to say, his purely spontaneous functioning. And so, every so often he goes in for an interview with the master called Sun Zen. And here is a drawing by Zen Shusato of the student confronted with the master. The master there with his big stick, not to punish him, but as it were, to see if that student can be phased. Here he comes, the student sits in the room and repeats the koan he's been given. Before your father and mother conceived you, what is your original nature? And then he has to answer like that, immediately without the slightest deliberation. And the teacher is sensitive to the least bit of hesitation, the least bit of artificiality, the least bit of, as it were, contriving an answer. And so the student lands in this terrible dilemma. Everything he does to present the master with an answer is wrong. Time and time again he goes in, but it's wrong. And at last he gets into a state of mind where he doubts everything. He doubts the ability of his intellect to solve these problems. He doubted that almost from the beginning. He doubts his own inner capacity to arrive at an answer spontaneously. He doubts his own reflex reactions to come out with, as it were, a spontaneous answer. Nothing that he can do is right. And this state is called technically in Zen the great doubt. And the master works to bring about that state. Now you see, when you get to the situation where you doubt everything you do and you have no longer any confidence in yourself, what is happening is that your ordinary, trained-in way of acting, acting deliberately, is being undermined. And when you come to the point that nothing you can do is right, suddenly there is a flip in consciousness, which is called in Zen, Satori, S-A-T-O-R-I, or sudden awakening. And at that moment, the observing self, the self which comments on oneself all the time, the self which obstructs, 
dissolves and disappears. And the flip is that whereas everything I did was wrong, now it's all right. And the monk becomes unobstructed, free as the cloud. And that is why a Zen monk is called unsweet, cloud and water. So he drifts like cloud and flows like water.